Tomorrow. Let's bring you in now. Sorry. These cartoonists, do you think they were racist? Could I please come in and correct? You've given goodness knows how much time to this extremist, Ashgab Bukhari, to have his say. Could I please now have my say about this? It's only 24 hours since a dozen people were gunned down in their offices in Paris. It's really rich that Sky News should be giving this platform at this moment to this man. We're giving you your man, platform, who, who sir. Says, Do give yes, us your view. But who, uh, you've also allowed to just smear the people who were murdered so brutally in Paris yesterday. You've just allowed them to smear those people as racists. Not me. Charlie Hebdo, that, Charlie that, Hebdo please, let please, me that, please finish my point. Charlie Hebdo, you don't know this, like you don't know any of the background of this, Ashgar, but Charlie Hebdo is a secularist, far-left-wing, anti-racist magazine. It has made a particular delight in recent years, quite rightly, of lampooning and attacking very virulently rubbish. the far-right-wing leader, Marine Le Pen. You say rubbish because rubbish. you don't know what you're talking yes, about. Let me make the more important a, 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 point on this. Let me make the more important point on this. debate, or are we going to talk Let about the actual issues here? Let me make the important point on this, which is that this is not to do with the war on terror, as Asghar Bukhari wants to talk That's about. This is about freedom of speech. Please, but more please, let, please let him speak. Apologize. Sorry, More sorry, importantly, Douglas, you have been massively diverted in this programme from what has actually happened and why. What is going on at the moment worldwide, and particularly in Europe, is an attempt to shut down any and all criticism of Islam, one religion alone. I'll hold up for a moment. Don't worry, it's not a cartoon of Mohammed. You don't have to get scared. This is the Christmas edition of Private Eye, uh, an, issue, an, an image which on the front cover lampoons, and quite rightly, quite amusing, not very, uh, uh, the Virgin Mary and Jesus, and has various jokes about, about where the frankincense should have been bought from and so on. That's perfectly commonplace, but you know what? If anyone had gone into Private Eye's offices yesterday and massacred the staff because of it in the name of Christianity or Jesus. I think that not only would all of the papers today have been a lot more robust, they would have shown, at the very least, shown this image to show what the person was, who did the killing was so irate about. The fact is that there is something going on which we have to identify. It is an, attack, an attempt in our societies to make Islam, and in particular the founder Islam, immune from any criticism. It cannot be allowed to continue. Continue. Uh, do you think there is a Muslim double standard going on here? No, I'd say there was a Western double standard. Both Obama and B uh, uh, Bush have not only killed journalists but had them locked up, and, uh, 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 and out including Al Jazeera journalists in Yemen and asking the dictator there to lock him up because they were asking the wrong fact. So, so how on earth can it be uh, just a Muslim issue? What they do in the typical people well, like Mr. Mr. Issue Murray. In the, sen in the sense that, that, that you say that any representation of Muhammad or any criticism. Of, of him in press is different than, than criticising Christianity, criticising Judaism like Charlie Hebdo has done. It's not about criticism, it's about demonisation. If you want to debate with me, Mr Murray, you, the, the coward that you are, you, know, you, you won't take me up on it, but on, in a public debate, let the public come, we can have well, a critical debate on... Debate we can have now. a critical debate... Well, yeah, we're that's right, you run away, now. you keep running away. Please, please that, try that, not to make it personal. We are having a public debate and you've had your say and he's had his. There's no need to make it personal, sir. Fine, so, 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 so what I would say is this, again... Ashkar, Ashkar, bruh, dude, you don't want to go there. It's real easy, dude, to say, oh, you don't want to have a real debate. You're a coward for not debating me. You run away from me. Did you ever ask Douglas Murray for a debate? Did you ever go through the proper channels to find out? You're here on the television show and then you throw this thing out there? And as a moderator rightly said, sir, there's no need to get personal. Douglas Murray did not get personal. He did not call this man a coward. He just basically said that his opinions is that he's taking you in the wrong direction, according to Douglas Murray, that this has nothing to do with ICE. Uh, yes, the acts were carried out, these uh, terrorist acts were carried out through Al-Qaeda-linked um, you know, acolytes, whether they were Al-Qaeda or ISIS or, you know, whatever, they were terrorist, Islamist, fundamentalist groups that carried out these terrorist acts of killing these journalists. But to say that this was, you know, the war on terror, I mean, is completely leading people down the wrong road. And again, this gentleman continues, as Kat, continues to talk about, you know, racism and, you know, just bigotry. And the question is, well, why isn't the same thing applied, the same standard, 
when Douglas Murray held up that picture and said, hey, look, here's a magazine, Private Eye or whatever it was, and to say that they're depicting, you know, the Virgin Mary, Jesus, in a way that a lot of people would not find flattering at all. Christians around the world, non-Christians too, probably. And on that fact, many Muslims and Jewish people the same, well, I don't know about you, but many Muslims the same way, that they would say the same thing. But the fact of the matter is that this gentleman coming out and delving, okay, into, uh, you know, ad hominem attacks, into, you know, challenging somebody, saying that you're a coward for not debating me. And what did Douglas Murray? He goes, no, no, no. He goes, what are you talking about? We're debating right here. You have just put a fire in the belly of Douglas Murray. And you don't want to do that. So anyways, let's continue. Point. When you have a, 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 a white middle class being demonized, there's nothing to fear. But when you have an underclass like the Jews or the blacks and now the Muslims, and, 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 and I find it strange that, that, that white liberals can't see this. I can understand why uh, right wing nuts can't uh, 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 see this. But why, why can white liberals wow. not see that? Why are we so different? Why, why do we have to be demonized? It's not about criticism. It's a false argument. OK, I let's, bring in, Jody, way, let's, bring, let's bring in Jody Ginsburg. Sorry, I'm just going to try and deflate some of the heat out of this, Douglas, uh, for a moment. Let's bring in Jody Ginsburg. What's your reaction to this debate so far? Well, first of all, let's be clear about something. We should not conflate racism with religious criticism. I think that's a very dangerous uh, debate yes. when we start to talk about criticising religion you go, as girl. racism. Um, there are laws to deal with racism. We're perfectly entitled to criticise religions and lampoon religions. That's the first thing. The second thing, and I would agree, we're getting away from the fact that this is a human, a human tragedy. Twelve people died, and they weren't all um, writers and journalists. Two of them were police doing their jobs, um, and all in the name of trying to prevent um, certain images being seen by other people. And I would agree with Stig. It's, as a free speech organisation, we would never um, dictate what it is that organisations show in their publications. But I think we should be honest with ourselves that there has been a trend towards self-censorship amongst uh, the media where we shy away from publishing certain images that we think will cause offence. And it's not just in terms of Islam. The trend generally is to move away from tweeting anything, saying anything, drawing anything that we might think offends a certain uh, group of people. And then let's, you know, let's yeah. be very clear about this. There is no right not to be offended. Let's bring in Stig on this. So, Stig, do you think that's, that's, that's a fair assessment? As a journalist, I like you, do you feel we do have our own filters that we are placing now and, and those filters are getting thicker and thicker and thicker? Less stuff is getting through. We are saying less. I think it's a, it's a broader society one. We live in a country that is desperate to take offence for virtually everything at any one time. And, and you know, you, you see people being arrested on Twitter for being rude or obnoxious. So, and I think that's a very legitimate point. We all live in, in a world where there is a knee-jerk reaction to anything that is published or broadcast or written. Uh, the mob often descends and people lose their sense of judgment. They don't recognise that, of course, people... Uh, can be offended. Being offended is not a bad thing. It's not something that needs to be protected. I, I, I think that the, the sun in common with lots of newspapers is not frightened to criticise Islam. You might make the argument that actually this is not an existential crisis for freedom of speech. There is an existential crisis for Islam at the moment as, as its adherents struggle to come to terms with the fact that extremists at the end of it are regularly doing insane and brutal things in the name of Religion. The no, sun no, is the in common with lots of people terror. not frightened not of criticising people I'm for that. We are out of time. It is religion. I'm gonna, we're going to have to leave it no, there. No, it's not. Stig Abel, Douglas Murray, Jody Ginsburg, and here in the studio. Ask Boy, the managing editor there, Stig, he hit the nail right on the freaking head. He said, you know what? Everybody gets offended, and you don't have a right not to get offended. That's right, folks. There's a lot of things that offend me. There's a lot of things that probably offend you guys out there. There's no crypt, you know. The, the, you know, there's no shield that you put up there and say, oh, "I can't be offended about that today." Today, I'm not going to be offended. Now, you can say to yourself, "You know what? There's going to be a lot of things out there that are going to offend me, but I'm not going to let it get to me. It might offend me. I'll probably say, "Oh my God, I can't believe they did that," and leave it at that. And that's the normal reaction across the board. 
whether you're religious or non-religious, you're atheist, you're agnostic, 99.99% of the people, they, and then they decide that if they do want to do something, they might do something with their wallet. That's right, folks. They'll decide. They'll do it with their wallet. They'll do it with their feet. In other words, if they see something that offends them and it's coming from a business, they're not going to use. They're not going to go into that business. So they're utilizing their feet to vote, to make a decision, to go into that store, or not go in that store, to give money to that store, to not give money to that store, to give money to an entity or not an entity, whatever it is. And then people will also utilize Twitter and social media to say what they want to say. That offended me, tweet it out. That didn't offend me, tweet it out. Make a video like we're doing right here. Did that offend you? It didn't offend you. A lot of people are going to find this video offensive. And a lot of people are not going to find this video offensive. It's all like they say, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Racism is in the eye or in the ear of the beholder or in the eyes of the beholder because of what you see, what you hear, what you read. That's all there is. You know, it's like they say, there's people say there's three kinds of truths. There's your truth. There's the other person's truth. And there's the truth. There's only one truth. That's that there's only one truth, but there are so many different degrees of racism out there. And everybody decides to use their degree of racism to fit their narrative. And what Ashkar is trying to do is basically say that all these cartoons, but notice how he only talks about the Islamic side of the cartoons where these were done. He would might be much better arguing from the point that it's against everybody, but he says it's the white, if white people are the predominant majority or force in a country or in the area, then to make fun of them doesn't mean anything because they've got the power. But then he talks about the downtrodden. You've got a hierarchy within white structure too. You've got lower middle class, you've got middle class, upper middle class. That's across the board. It has nothing to do with color or race or ethnicity socioeconomic. So Ashkar would have a much better argument in not being a hypocrite if he was incorporating everything into the argument. At least I would that would be intellectual honesty rather than the intellectual dishonesty he brings to it, just, just framing it as a Muslim-only problem and that it has nothing to do with religion, but it has everything to do with the war on terror. I don't agree with that at all, and neither did the guests here on the uh, interview. Well, folks, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host. My name is Dr. Nasser. If you've been done so already and you like our content, subscribe to the channel, like, share, and follow us. You all know what to do. Take a look at our other video content. They're linked here and below. My final thought is always, when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.